Hi lads and lasses, Modest Pelican here with Hyperscape. If you enjoy this video, please hike to the summit of Mount Everest and destroy everyone else's flags, replacing them with Modest Pelican gaming ones, as this really helps spread the good word of my channel. Welcome to Hyperscape. It's like RuneScape, but instead of buying a medieval girlfriend for virtual gold pieces, it's a brutal futuristic fight to the death. The year is 2054 and society has really thrived and prospered. This is probably what the world would look like if everyone stayed sufficiently hydrated at all times. Basically, they've created this arena where humans can fight it out, battle royale style, to prove who the alpha is. Winning is tough though, and to truly learn the scape and emerge victorious, a contender will need to sacrifice sleep, family, basic hygiene, and it probably wouldn't hurt to break up any relationship you're currently in. I told my girl yesterday, Hey shorty, the scape's calling, I need to put a diaper on and get that dubs so we're done here. She was pretty sad saying that I ruined her birthday, but the important thing is, I'm ready to scape. The first thing I have to do is select my avatar. I pick Karen because she's assertive. Obviously just kidding, I pick this guy because he kind of looks like Keanu Reeves. I'm then transported to a training facility where a robot talks me through the basic mechanics of the game. Not just any robot either. This thick titanium mama do be looking good. If I wasn't so busy becoming the next beloved esports hero, I'd empty her recycling bin if you know what I mean. That actually doesn't make a lot of sense. Like am I implying that I take her bins out and finish her chores? Um, uh, Hyperscape. There seems to be a vast assortment of abilities you can choose from, like turning into a ball and bouncing around. There's also a shooting range, and I proceed to decimate a bunch of inanimate stationary bots. These bots actually remind me of my good mate Stealth Omato. Well I mean I say that, but I actually came up against Stealth Omato in a random game, what are the chances? And to my utter humiliation, he killed me. And trust me, I thought about deleting my YouTube channel and then KMSing. But fortunately, I was revived and managed to get some sweet sweet revenge to restore the natural order of our friendship. But I'm getting ahead of my Myself. I finish inflating my confidence at the training facility and now it's time to squat up with the lads so we can get that sweet dubs. I link up with Stealtho Robbo and Stealtho Fieldo. A lot of people ask why so many of my mates have Stealtho in their name. But I want to ask you why don't you have Stealtho in your name? You think you're better than us? You honestly might be. Anyway, this is the pre-game lobby and it's where you can practice jumping around or intimidate your opponents. I jump onto this small cube and thrust my baton into the air to symbolise to the capitalist dogs that communism is the future, I mean, hyperscape. We then all hop into small pods which kind of look like, well, let's just say there'll be no fertilising of an egg today because we are here to game. We are here to prove that three young holy Australian men can rise up and achieve the impossible. We have to win this game no matter what the cost and if we don't, I'll give away my virginity to the highest bidder. We decide to land at the Voltaic Lock and it's game on. It's that time of a battle royale game where you must loot as fast and efficiently as possible. We proceed to all loot the same apartment building instead of fanning out. Obviously this isn't at all tactical, but it's always nice to be close to your bros I guess. Still surprisingly, with no weapon or ability in my inventory, the lads call out that there's a dodgy malacca right on them and he's allegedly being quite aggressive. With little choice, I run to the aid of my friends, wielding a baton and do what I do best. Spam the melee button over and over again and against all odds we emerge victorious. Well I mean there was three of us and Fieldo did have a minigun, but hey, everyone likes a good underdog story. As I loot one of the ultra-modern train stations, I'm jumped and I guess some things never change. Bloody chavs mate, shanks and shivs, but fortunately I also have a wall ability and recognising that this man clearly has a state-of-the-art gaming chair, I throw it up to ease the pressure. There can be no more running though, it's time to end the big girl's career. Wow. I can't believe I just got done dirty by a man called Hairless Wheel. Seems strange that he'd even have to specify that the wheel is hairless because I can't imagine a hairy wheel. But at the very least, I think we can all appreciate he's out here making us question life. So yeah, when you die, you turn into a ghost. No one can see you except your teammates, but you can observe others having fun and call out where hostiles are. If you stand on an enemy's corpse, your team can reboot you into the game, so we need to find some bodies. 
So here I am, running around the big city as a ghost, wondering if Robbo will be able to clutch up as he's the only one left alive. This is a time where I can reflect and wonder where it all went so wrong. Why did I aggressively push a guy with a shotgun? But hey, he was the better player and deserves my respect. Kidding, never be the bigger man. I hope he dies and he got lucky and is by anyone's definition absolutely trash. I find a respawn point and Robbo, who did pick Karen, do be looking pushy thick. He brings me back to life like I was Jesus, but this resurrection will debatably have a more influential effect on humanity. I loot up again, and now it's time to prove to this entire lobby why FaZe, Cloud9, and NRG Esports want our signatures so badly. I hear some commotion outside, and the lads are in a heated gunfight with walls being thrown up left, right, and center. I launch myself on a jump pad so that I soar to the heavens and then come crushing down upon my opponent while my minigun sprays out 6,000 rounds of righteousness per minute. Sorry champ, but youth group's over. Welcome to Papa Pelly's Church of Sweat. We're not out of the woods yet though, as gunshots have attracted other players who have failed to recognize that today we're gaming harder than my stepdad's peenie on a Sunday morning. Under fire, I duck into an apartment building like I was an Uber Eats driver on amphetamines. Unlike an Uber Eats driver though, I won't be feeding questionable fast food to those who don't enjoy cooking. Rather, I'll be delivering the feeling of disappointment to the Don 420 as I rinse him like a dish sponge. I duck inside, and as I turn, I spray some bullets into Stealtho Robbo. Thank God friendly fire isn't a thing in this game, or that would have been awkward. He unfortunately gets taken down, so on the fly I decide to implement a stunning and brave tactic I like to call camping my little dick off. Unfortunately, this leaves me trapped like a rat, and I realize I've got to make an exit, so I duck away with a vertical leap and manage to finesse my attackers. With both lads dead, it's now on me to clutch up. Is this where you'd want to be close to the end of a game? No, it's definitely not, but we're not going to let these unfortunate circumstances define us. I sound like a damn motivational speaker, but if we can win this game, I think any of us can do anything. Then all of a sudden, the miracle we need pops right up. There was obviously a fight here, and so we seize the opportunity, and I proceed to bring the lads back to life. Well, before I bring Robbo back, I take all the good loot, because between you and me, I'm a pretty selfish teammate, but honestly, he would have done the same. With this injection of positivity, we are ready to bounce back and close this game out. Nothing can halt this momentum except a room full of enemies who are all shooting at me at once, goddammit. What were you all doing in there, talking about your feelings? Camping's only okay when I do it. Read a book, you Neanderthals, but at least I got one of them. So yeah, another twist in the tale, and my fate is now with the boys once more. It's super arousing, I mean strange, watching people when you're in ghost mode, as you can observe their every move. I momentarily consider calling out that I found a safe spot for a respawn as a joke, but then I think better of it. While I was busy not giving any helpful callouts to my mates, Fieldo dies and the situation becomes even more grim. There's only 11 squads left and the zone is rapidly shrinking. In every man's life, he'll find himself in a situation where he must deliver the goods. Perhaps it's when your wife is pregnant and about to give birth and you have to get her to hospital in time so she can bring new life into this big, beautiful world. In this metaphor, Fieldo and myself are the baby and Robbo is the dad, and honestly, this comparison was a pretty weird choice on my behalf. And to our delight, Robbo does it again, and what top form the big man is in. Instead of a gas circle, the map disintegrates, which is pretty sick, and yeah, I decide to pick up this gun so I can get back in the fight, and f this f he can suck my average f hyperscape. Robbo somehow gets me up again, and it's now or never for us. At the final circle, a crown appears, and you can either hold this crown for 45 seconds to win, or kill every other squad. We decide to make a push for the crown, but it's red hot, as obviously everyone is thinking the same thing. It's a total mind game of when the right time is to grab the crown. If you pick it up too early, everyone in the lobby wants you, but I suppose it would be nice to feel wanted. I position myself on the monorail so I can beam the crown wearer, but as more players fall, it becomes easier for the crown wearer to survive. We'll need to make a move soon. It's time to get sweaty. In fact, I'm so ready to win this, I even pause half of my Christian music downloads to minimize my ping. Robbo swoops in and grabs that royalty drip, and his plan is to bounce around as a ball while I cover him from above. It's a bold strategy, but not as bold as the time I pretended to be a lawyer to two foreign students when I was 18. 
I had this friend I used to work with and I went back to his place to get ready before we hit the bars. He had better fashion than me and as I was borrowing his clothes, I actually looked pretty good. But more importantly, I looked very rich and so I seized the opportunity. I started to believe the lie and all of a sudden they wanted to take a cab back to my large house that I had explained I owned several of. I started to get nervous and then one of them got a bit cluey and questioned if I was a real lawyer. And so I thought I'd tell them the truth because I assumed it would make us all laugh. I owned up and her facial expression immediately changed. She stood up straight and went from like 5'4 to 8'3 real quick and then slapped me across the jaw in front of my mate. It was the second best thing that's ever happened to me. In one of the most beautiful comeback stories of 2020, we astonishingly secure the dubs. It sure was dicey there for a few moments, but we got it done and it just goes to show. If you have a mate who revives you every time you fall, anything is possible. Thanks for watching, you absolute legends, and a massive thanks to those who support the channel on Patreon. Until next time, and as always, stay classy.